Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Monday, February 15th, 2021. Today, the impeachment trial of Donald Trump concludes with the largest majority in history voting to convict. Mitch McConnell says Trump is guilty of inciting insurrection despite having voted to acquit on a technicality. More information tying Roger Stone to the attack on the Capitol. Five Proud Boys are charged with conspiracy in the insurrection. Biden asks all U.S. attorneys but two to resign. Georgia expands its criminal investigation to include Lindsey Graham's phone call. And inside the Democrats' decision to forego witnesses in the impeachment trial. I'm A.G. And I'm Dana Goldberg. Hey, Dana, how, I, I, how was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I love that we stopped asking each other, how are you? Because really, who's OK during these times? Um, it was it's OK. It was good. Um, nothing terrible happened, which is knock on wood. Um, I'm not as angry about the trial as I was yesterday. And I know we'll talk more about that through the episode, but I just sort of calmed down around all of it. I just want him to stop taking over the news uh, cycle again. I would just never love to see his name if possible. Otherwise, unless it's like Donald Trump's going to prison, then I, I all day, every day, 24 seven, shoot it into my veins. Other than that, mm-hmm. make him go away. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all I want to hear is about his investigations uh, into him and his businesses and his children and, and his, uh, you know, uh, indictments, convictions, sentencing, stuff like that. Yes. Yes, I'm all about that. The only Trump I ever want to hear about again is our guest, is your guest, the interview. Mm. Yes, speaking of, that's correct. We we spent a great deal of time today talking to Mary Trump about her reaction to uh, the events of the past week. And uh, it's she's just, I'm, I always feel so much better after I talk to her. We just, it's just nice. I mean, one, we've all become friends, which is really great. So it feels like we're just talking to each other as if we would be sitting over coffee and Luckily, we have an audience that likes to hear it. But I think we both have this uncanny way of just bringing out the laughter and the lightness and Mary over the, you know, the course of the months. And it's just always a pleasure. So I, I know that everyone at home enjoys that. And I, I hope that you enjoy this one, too. It's it's a good one. Mm, yeah, for, for real. And also, you can uh, join Dana and me <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, <laughs> every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific on the Stereo app. That's 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. It's like our after party we sing songs, we do weird things, things get irreverent. It's so much fun. And I absolutely love the the people who join and ask us questions and sing songs to us. It's so much. It's, I can't it's download the stereo app. The listeners have been fabulous, absolutely fabulous participating. So thank you all so much for making our experience even more enjoyable than it already is. Yes. And if you don't have a stereo account, just download the free app. Go to stereo.com slash Allison Gill. And you can sign up to to do that, and it's free, and it's so much fun. Follow us, yeah, both of us. Give us both a follow. Um, I'm DG Comedy on there. You can just put in Dana Goldberg, and you'll find it. Dana Goldberg, whatever. Don't put in what the first thing I said because you'll never find me. <laughs> but definitely put in Dana Goldberg, and then hit follow. It's not Dana Goldblum. Dana right? Goldberg. <laughs> um, and uh, you can also catch Andrew Torres and I from you know we do our cleanup on aisle 45 on Tuesdays at five. I so the Andrew Torres and me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I was so good. I was so good all day. Sorry. I had to move away from the mic on that one. My mic's going hot right now, so I'm going to play with it, and uh, we're going to fix it. Andrew Torres and me. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, one day. I promise, y'all, I will get it. But until that day, <laughs> let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. Okay, so clearly the lead story over the weekend is the impeachment trial of Donald Trump and the events that transpired on the final day of questions and debate. Uh, I'm going to go over the headlines, and uh, we'll, but we'll be joined later by Mary Trump. As I said, we're going to discuss the fallout, things that happened afterwards, Mitch's speech on the, on the Senate floor, which was weird. Um, so the Senate voted to acquit. But the vote was 57-43. 67 votes are needed for a conviction. And uh, like I said, Mitch McConnell gave a speech after the vote on the floor of the Senate, unequivocally blaming Trump for the big lie and inciting the insurrection January 6th. Though he ultimately voted to acquit, 
and said he did so for jurisdictional reasons. That set a precedent for a January exception going forward, which is very dangerous. I'm scared about that. What was noteworthy about his speech was that he said Trump is now vulnerable to criminal and civil litigation for his role in the attack on the Capitol, paving the way for our future attorney general to investigate and possibly charge him with seditious conspiracy inciting an insurrection and perhaps other charges, including indictments under the RICO statute, for example. Um, Lindsey Graham took to Fox News to say Mitch, Mitch's speech would come back to haunt Republicans in 2022. <laughs> uh, though I argue that I would argue and say that their vote to acquit him is what could lead to Democrats holding the Senate in 2022. 20 seats are up for election in the Senate in the midterms, so... And, you know, many of those 43 Republicans, Dana, that voted not guilty went on the record saying they did so only because of the constitutional considerations. And these statements could be used by federal and state prosecutors to go after Donald criminally with the argument that he was guilty and would have been convicted by the Senate if not for the jurisdictional issues the Republicans decided to hide behind. So we'll have more on the impeachment in a bit uh, with Mary. That sounds good. This next one is basically five very bad people are in a lot of trouble. These alleged members, five alleged members of the far right Proud Boys group have been charged with criminal conspiracy in last month's deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol that sought to keep then President Donald Trump in power. That's according to a criminal complaint unsealed on Thursday. Federal prosecutors on Thursday also outlined details of a suspected plot by the anti-government Oath Keepers group to stage a, quote, quick reaction force outside Washington on January 6th that was ready to, quote, fight hand to hand if ordered to do so by Trump or by the moron uh, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, what was it? Combat by, by hand? Trial by combat. combat. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm not picking you as my fighter on that that game. Uh, two alleged members of yet another right-wing extremist militia, the Boogaloo Boys, uh, were arrested by FBI agents in Louisville, Kentucky, on Thursday on federal charges of instigating acts of violence through social media. One of the two, John Sobleski, 32, was accused of inciting a riot in downtown Louisville on January 6th, uh, in quote, contemporaneous, contemporaneous with the Capitol riots in which he and others pointed rifles at motorists and barricaded a number of roads, federal prosecutors said. So they barricaded a bunch of roads uh, in the area. The second man, Adam Turner, was accused of directing threats at police officers. You know, the mm. whole Blue Lives Matter crew. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Louisville charges underscore the dimension of right-wing extremism across the country in the aftermath of a tumultuous 2020 elections. The complaint alleges that as far as back as December, AG, December organizers of the Proud Boys, including its leader, Enrique Tario, Tario uh, encouraged their members to travel to Washington, D.C. on January 6th. We already know that that was encouraged by the then president. Uh, Tario was arrested two days before the Capitol riots on charges of possessing two high-capacity rifle magazines and for burning a Black Lives Matter banner during the December demonstration by Trump supporters. That's the one that turned very violent. We all saw clips of that. Now, to date, the United States has charged at least 18 people who are believed to be associated or allied with the Proud Boys. You know what would be great, AG, if this really did go to a federal trial, and I do believe it's going to go to a criminal trial, I want one of them to take the stand. I want one of them to say, no, our, our organization was found, was funded. I mean, we got money from Donald Trump. We had, you know, we had uh, communication with his administration. He knew exactly what was going on. Yeah, well, that's going to be their defense, right? That's been the defense of uh, most of the insurrectionists so far. As Trump invited us, Trump told us to do it. It's it's Trump's fault. Now, that doesn't excuse them criminally, but that's what they're going to testify to. And that's the defense that they're going to present. And if they were funded by Donald Trump and encouraged that that is going to come up in the defense as well. Do you think any of these folks won't flip on Trump in an instant, knowing that Trump deserted them, didn't didn't give a blanket pardon to them? And in his defense over the last weekend for impeachment, he said, no, it wasn't my fault. They did it on their own and they deserve to go to prison. So yeah. mm, you think any of them are going to roll? Uh, Probably. Yeah. Now, at least six people who had provided security for Roger Stone entered the Capitol during the January 6th attack. That's according to New York Times. Uh, videos show the group guarding Mr. Stone. Uh, we know who he is. The, the New York Times goes on to explain who Mr. Roger Stone is. We don't need to know, <laughs> we know who he is. <laughs> All six of these uh, guys are associated with the Oath Keepers. That's the far-right anti-government militia known to provide security for right-wing personalities and protesters at public events. 
Video then showed all six of the security guards inside the Capitol building during the attack. All six of the ones that were shown in video with Roger Stone earlier that day ended up in video inside the Capitol. If you look at the New York Times report, they have their faces circled standing next to Roger Stone. Then they have their faces circled in the Capitol. Now, two of these Oath Keepers have been charged with conspiracy already. Others are seen uh, in the hallways. And so that's, I mean, you know, because at first we were like, oh, there's a video of Roger Stone standing outside his hotel on January 6th. He said he had nothing to do with it. A couple of days later, oh, he's surrounded by dudes with Oath Keeper patches. Huh. Weird. Oh, he says that they were just his private security and he had nothing to do with it. Now we have video and photographic evidence that those six people were inside the Capitol that day. One, I think one of the best things, to be honest with you about this, is that all of these guys that got a pardon, um, Stone and a bunch of other people, they're going to keep criming. And this is one of them. Like, great, you're going to pardon for these other crimes. These guys are still going to end up in prison one day. Just have hope. He and Richard Nixon are both going to prison again one day. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have this damn Richard Nixon off my back, but yeah, no, that. But par- Trump pardoned him before the insurrection. Flynn and Stone meet yep. the Flintstones. Yeah, exactly, he, he did it before the insurrection. So that that is not covered by the pardon. It is not. And this this next story brings me great joy because I I, I want him to go down for this. Uh, this is from the Washington Post. An Atlanta area prosecutor plans to scrutinize a post election day phone call between no one other than Senator Lindsey Graham. And Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, or Ben, ben Raffensperger, Raffensperger, if you are defending Donald Trump in a Senate trial. <laughs> oh my God, what a bunch of maroons. Um, so they're going to be uh, scrutinizing this call as part of a criminal investigation into whether former President Donald Trump or his allies broke Georgia laws while trying to reverse his defeat in the state. This is according to a person familiar with the probe. Now, the individual who spoke on the condition of anonymity because of the ongoing probe said the inquiry by Fulton County District Attorney uh, Fanny Willis will include an examination of the call Graham, as we know, a very staunch Trump ally, made to Raffensperger 10 days after November 3rd election. So during this conversation, and I hope you all recall, uh, Graham asked Georgia Secretary of State whether he had the power to toss out all, all mail-in ballots, but just in certain counties. Uh, Let me give you a clue. The black counties, the predominantly black counties. Raffensperger told the Washington Post this in an interview days later. He said Graham appeared to be asking him to improperly find a way to set aside legally cast ballots. And that's exactly what he did. That is, it's not, this doesn't appear to be that. I mean, I understand that everything, when you write about stuff like this, it has to be allegedly, Mm -mm. there's a phone call. Mm -hmm. He did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you read the Georgia statute on election interference, it reads like it was written specifically for what Lindsey Graham and Donald Trump did. Like it, (laughs) like there's no way to misinterpret. There's absolutely no way to misinterpret this. So I'm looking forward to see what comes out of this. Now, Lindsey Graham might have a little bit of a different, like might have a little bit more of a defense than Donald Trump because he said he wanted to get signatures matched, otherwise throw them out. And that could be a defense for him. But this is going to be really interesting. But uh, a few other headlines before we take a break. Biden has, in fact, uh, asked all of Trump's attorneys general, no, Trump's U.S. attorneys, excuse me, to resign, except Durham. Uh, and the guy investigating Hunter Biden, the next steps are that the applicants will be interviewed by the senators from the state that the applicants are vying for. So there's more to come on that. Um, And we'll talk about that a little bit more on this week's Clean Up on Aisle 45 podcast. By the way, if you're looking for the Clean Up on Aisle 45 podcast, I found out that clean up is one word. So if you search clean up as two words, you won't find it. So just clean up is one word. (laughs) Uh, And coming up next, discussion with Mary Trump about the impeachment trial and the Democrats' decision to forego calling witnesses. So stay with us. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's AG, and today's episode of Daily Beans is brought to you by Plush Care. With all we've experienced in the past couple of years with this pandemic, it reminds us that our health is the most important thing of all. And despite everything that's going on now, it's crucial to be able to see a doctor when you're not feeling well. That's why I use Plush Care. Plush Care provides primary and urgent health care through virtual appointments, and scheduling an appointment even for the same day is really easy. I just pick a slot that works for me, click, and then I'm booked online. So I don't waste time on hold, and I don't have to wait in crowded waiting rooms, which is really dangerous. With my Plush Care membership, I 
can see my doctor from the comfort of my own home, wearing my PJs if I want. And with Plush Care, I can get diagnosed, treated, and have prescriptions sent to my local pharmacy if I need to, all within minutes. And if I have any questions before or after my visit, they let me send unlimited messages to my care team. Plus, Plush Care accepts most major insurance carriers, and it's available in all 50 states. And with how difficult things are, if you're feeling anxious or depressed or stressed about what's going on, uh, Plush Care doctors are there to help. They can discuss treatment options and provide prescriptions as needed. I can tell you personally, my Plush Care experience has been wonderful. Signing up was easy. It only took a minute. It's very user-friendly. It's just as easy to schedule an appointment, and the entire process has been so convenient. I was immediately comfortable and felt confident with my doctor too because all plush care doctors graduated from one of the top 50 medical schools in the country and they're all highly rated by their patients so i have peace of mind that i'm getting the highest quality health care plush care makes it easier for me to get the excellent care i need when i need it and with plush care i don't put off seeing a doctor and neither should you so no more excuses make your appointment today go to plushcare.com slash daily beans that's p-l-u-s-h-c-a-r-e.com slash daily beans plushcare.com slash daily beans hey everybody Welcome back. Uh, Dana and I are now joined by Mary Trump, or uh, Mary Trump is joined by Dana and me to discuss impeachment. I'm learning about, uh, I'm, I'm trying to break my old habit, my old early 1970s habit of uh, saying, and I, no matter what. So uh, welcome, Mary. Hello. Hi. It is great to be here. Lies, lies. Is it, Mary? Everyone can hear you. Well, it's great to be here. It's like the <laughs> circumstances on the other hand. <laughs> Are less than <laughs> ideal. That's fair. That's fair. It is great to see you. Mary's looking at me a little weird. There, there, I am constantly being corrected on my utilization of you know join Dana and I because it's join Dana uh, yep. and me. I said I did say work because because in grade school we were taught uh, that it was and I no matter what no matter what it was always I and so you know I know that that's not correct so. grade school by nuns apparently as Mary shakes her head yes so it was apparently <laughs> nuns that put this it was a Catholic grade school I don't understand this is a Jew I'm like you can have grammatically correct nuns right I, what the but did nuns not have grammar <laughs> I <don't understand. laughs> well they had yardsticks and I have knuckles yes <sighs> you do what you're told swap yeah yeah hard habit to break but uh, something I wanted to have you on to talk to you about because there seems to be a little bit of a split on Twitter yesterday um, discussing, well, first of all, I want to open this by saying that I think the impeachment management team did an outstanding job. Uh, they were incredible. They were well prepared. And I also think that, I mean, they got the most bipartisan vote in the history of the United States for impeaching a president for, you know, uh, convicting president with 57, 43 uh, which is the most, um, the the record prior to that was the first impeachment of Donald, where where we only where we had one Republican uh, cross the aisle to vote with the Democrats. And that was Mitt Romney, and so I just want to get that out of the way. I want everyone to know that I think the Democrats did a wonderful job. I love the Democrats. I am still a Democrat. I love the Democrats because uh, if you, I've learned that if you do any little bit of criticism or questioning. On social media, you will be uh, there. Will be throngs of people um, wondering why you're trying to split the party. I'm not trying to do that, but <laughs> and there's there's always a but, right? Uh, I wanted to. I also want to say I feel better today than I did yesterday. I'm I'm more understanding of the what happened today than I was yesterday. I was very upset yesterday, and it's because they said they wanted to call witness they said they and they were specifically according to the washington post looking to just get the testimony of butler herrera butler and then there was uh chaos and confusion and then they took a break to call a quorum call to give everyone a chance to settle uh apparently the republicans said we'll block everything you bring and we'll have 300 witnesses neither of which they could do both of those are idle threats so i'm not sure why Anyone was persuaded by that, but they ended up deciding not to call uh, any witnesses, including Butler, and uh, landed on putting a stipulation in the record to get the evidence entered into the record. That, you know, that phone call with McCarthy, that uh, profanity laced phone call where McCarthy was like, Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? So I'm, I have questions, and I was wondering, Mary, what you th thought about that initially and has your opinion sort of changed over the last 24 hours yeah i i'm right there with you um i was really upset yesterday 
because the the arguments that were being laid out first were it wouldn't make a difference to the vote. Well, by the same token, neither did the defense, did the prosecution, the brilliant, eloquent, patriotic, necessary prosecution. So, so what, we shouldn't have had that simply because we knew that the traitors in the Republican Party weren't going to vote to convict the greatest traitor to this country. Uh, and I, I say that even worse than Robert Lee, because at least Robert Lee was fighting us from the outside. <laughs> um, Good point. So, you know, as far as I was concerned, the prosecution wasn't to change minds in this Republican Senate. It was to in educate the American people. 100%. So the more we know, the better. And I think it, it seemed, again, I... Also, no clue what was going on behind closed doors. But I I think it was more that there was this hope. Like, I, it would have been better if we'd never thought known that they were going to call witnesses. Yes. Because then it felt like a cave. And I think I tweeted something like, you know, I'm tired of feeling like nobody's fighting for us. You know, even though I know they were. But it felt terrible. It felt like having the rug pulled out again. It felt like Lucy in the football again. And, um, you know, there was so much going on that that there was no clear messaging. So it wasn't until, you know, some time had passed and people like uh, the brilliant Daniel Goldman were kind of laying out uh, what happened and the reasons why um, we kind of got the best of both worlds, uh, even though it didn't feel like it, with having Butler's testimony in the record even though she wasn't going to be called as a witness. Um, and that, you know, <laughs> what the prosecution did with a huge assist from the defense, actually, was make it clear that Donald needs to be prosecuted yeah. in a court, in, in, you know, in, in the legal system. So I think definitely feeling better about it than I did yesterday. Um, and again, takes nothing away from that extraordinary job that the House managers did, led by the unspeakably brave uh, Jamie Raskin. It was fabulous. I mean, I would, I can't even deal with that, uh, actually. So I can't even imagine. But, you know, all to a person, they were, I, I you know, it, it was one of those situations, honestly, where it's like, okay, how could any person look at the house managers and look at the republicans or look at donald's lawyers and think that our side is in orders of magnitude better but here we are yeah and and many republican senators who voted not guilty agreed that the the dem managers made their case and that trump was uh, donald was guilty of inciting an insurrection but because of a jurisdictional technicality, um, them actually believing incorrectly that you can't impeach a former officer. That's why they voted the way they did. And that'll come in handy later, I think, in criminal prosecutions, because, you know, I mean, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about Mitch. But to go over the objections of the witness thing that that I'm still trying to process, because we now have our reasons as to why they didn't. Um, First of all, just as you pointed out, it wasn't to change Republican minds, right? Um, witnesses, witness testimony is the gold standard, right? It's so much more impactful than a stipulation or a document or a statement. Um, and we've had tons of former U.S. attorneys and prosecutors on here who will attest to that, right? That's just sort of a known thing. Um, but a lot of folks were saying, well, the <clears throat> the Republicans threatened to delay, uh, to, to drag the trial out for weeks and delay Biden's agenda. However, if you only called Butler and deposed Butler, you could have wrapped it up within this week, you know, this coming week, Val uh, Valentine's Day week, I guess is what you would call it, or President's Day week. Um, and because what they would have done is they would have deposed, uh, deposed her on, you know, via Zoom, and then they would have brought clips in or had her testify live in, 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 at the Senate trial. 
And that would have still wrapped in, in this week. And this week, the Senate is adjourned. They're not working in D.C. this week. They're home in their states. I don't know why. I have problems with that, too. <laughs> I think they should be working in D.C. right now. But that's neither here nor there for this argument. So having her testify wouldn't have delayed anything. So I'm still confused as to why when Butler was a friendly witness and was willing to testify and verified she was willing to testify today uh, and yesterday, she verified it after the fact, why they didn't put forth or after they got the votes that witnesses were allowed, why they didn't put forth a resolution to have only Herrera Butler deposed. Um, Now, if they didn't have the votes to do that, then just tell us that that was the problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I'd, I'd be like, sweet, okay, that's that's a reason not to do this then. Uh, but they, they haven't given that reason, and I'm just still confused as to why they haven't, why they didn't specifically do that. Now, I mean, it's over, and we have to look forward, and et cetera, and I don't want to harp on it for too long, but I'm just really confused about, and I, I, I saw Asha Rangappa's change of heart, and I saw Daniel... Uh, Daniel's change of heart or not change of heart but his explanation and I was like okay all right, this makes sense but and I love how Raskin by the way was like hey this was my call if you have an issue you can talk to me about it I thought that was that accountability was incredible yeah I mean it didn't help though that we're hearing Chris Kuhn say that people want to go home for Valentine's Day he needs to go right He's like some. He's like this 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 Democrat who still believes in bipartisanship. He needs to go. So Delaware, do better. <laughs> um, but I I think, you know, I trust. I would trust Jamie Raskin with my life. So um, if that's what he says, I believe him. And I, it just wasn't clear. Again, yesterday it wasn't clear if it was his call or if it was the Senate Democrats, some of whom were getting nervous. Um, but I think I could be completely wrong, but I think it's that if Democrats call a witness, the Republicans get to call e- an equal number of witnesses. And the, the, the other problem, you know, which is why, even though I think we should have had Capitol police officers there, right. We should have had, um, uh, you know, um, staffers. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, staffers, yeah. other, mm-hmm. other witnesses, um, who were, you know, somewhat objective. Um, so although staffers, I'm not so sure because 400 staffers signed a letter urging conviction, but they were all democratic staffers. So there you go. <laughs> um, shocking. Um, so the other problem was that they couldn't get anybody who was, um, actually involved, like technically, Butler's Herrera Butler's statement is, is hearsay. Um, they couldn't get Pence or McCarthy to testify, and if they had gotten to testify, they couldn't trust them to tell the truth. Yeah, and if they refused, they would have to go to court, right. and it could be like McGann's refusal to testify, and it could take three, four years, right, to resolve. Right, and and you know why do something if it's going to damage your utterly uh, airtight case? So I think that's that's where they landed ultimately. And I get it. Yeah, I, I'm with you, though. I just wish they wouldn't have said they were going to call witnesses and, and had that vote. I think the 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 dangling it and taking it away um, did did more damage. It was sort of like I feel like it was sort of like Donald getting covid when we were like, what? And then, you know, he's in the hospital. We're like, oh, they're like, oh, he's he got better. And we're like, yeah, oh, then the worst possible outcome happened. All. Yeah. I just wish he didn't get it at all. That would have been better. Our hopes up. It would have been better. Yeah, exactly. Would have been better if we hadn't known about the witnesses. Instead, we were like, wait, what, what happened? Right. Yeah. And 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 again, I, it doesn't take away from their incredible the job, the incredible job they did. It wouldn't have changed any Republican minds. We are in the same place that we would have been otherwise. Uh, we, if we had a witness or a couple of witnesses, we may have had more Americans moved by the testimony, which is the point. But the statement is in the record, and so I'm 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 more okay with it today than I was yesterday. But oh boy, yesterday I was really upset. Um, I want to talk about uh, Mitch and Mitch's little um, fancy speech, but I have to take a quick break. Would you mind hanging around? Not at all. Thanks. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's AG for the Daily Beans, and this segment of the podcast is brought to you by Caliper CBD. 
Life can throw us some curveballs, as we know. Going through stress is part of the experience, and we know it's important to practice self-care, but taking care of yourself shouldn't add to your stress. It shouldn't be difficult, right? And that's the great thing about CBD. It helps you feel better without having to make drastic changes to your routine. If you have not tried CBD, I recommend it a lot because CBD has helped me feel less anxious and more calm. It's helped me sleep easier, and I even feel less sore after long workouts. My favorite thing about Caliper CBD specifically is they've introduced a better way to consume CBD. It's an easy-to-use powder, and unlike CBD oils and tinctures, Caliper CBD powder is totally tasteless. It mixes easily in any food or drink, and there are precisely 20 milligrams in each packet, so you're never wondering how much CBD you're taking again. I like to put it in my morning coffee or a post-workout protein shake. It's clinically proven. Also, get this, you absorb 450% more CBD with Caliper CBD powder than compared to tinctures. That's so much more. And you get all the benefits of uh, cal- from Caliper CBD in just 15 minutes. That is twice as fast as CBD oil. And Caliper, of course, is completely THC-free, so you get all the benefits of CBD without any intoxicating or mind-altering effects. Caliper is made with all natural non-GMO ingredients, no fillers, no added chemicals or artificial flavors. So take care of yourself, but also make it easy on yourself with Caliper CBD. Get 20% off your first order when you use promo code DAILYBEANS at trycaliper.com slash dailybeans. You can try Caliper CBD risk-free for 30 days, and if you don't love it, they will give you a full refund. That's trycaliper.com slash dailybeans. And don't forget promo code dailybeans for 20% off your first order. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We are here with uh, Dana, Mary Trump, and myself. Is that correct? Did I do that right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the three the three of us are here. <laughs> Uh, and we're talking about um, impeachment and witnesses and, and the, um, the ultimate acquittal of Donald. Uh, and I wanted to now talk about what Mitch got up and did afterwards, because on one hand, I am elated because he has helped Democrats with that speech, probably inadvertently, in a, in a really meaningful way. But also it was so disingenuous uh, and against how he actually voted. I was wondering how, like, I'm having a hard time kind of meshing those two feelings together. I was wondering what you thought about it. Yeah, I I, I don't understand why I let these people get to me anymore because, what do we, you know, <laughs> that's exactly what we should expect. Um, look, if, if anything, if anything, this is yet another instance in which the brokenness of our system has been revealed um, because... All right, so we had 45 Republicans saying that (laughs) impeaching, not impeaching, convicting somebody who was impeached while he was in the Oval Office is unconstitutional, even though McConnell passed on the opportunity to convict him while he was still in the Oval Office. So it's just, it's utter, utter nonsense on the one hand. Um, But then they they did the same thing. They still used it as an excuse, even though 55% of senators said, no, it's fine. And that should have been the standard. Like you should not any longer have been allowed to use that as a reason 100%. because it was a moot point. And I think about it this way. If you're uh, called for jury duty and you are going to be, you're being um interviewed or voir dire to see if you, you're going to be in a, cap, a juror in a capital case, right? If you say, I'm against the death penalty, you can't be on that jury because you would be completely incapable of making a decision during the sentencing period. That's how I see this. You don't believe in this, the validity of this trial, even though it's been voted on to be valid, you should not get to participate. And don't get me started on the witnesses, victims, co-conspirators thing. (laughs) Um, So, you know, and also I'm not entirely sure how you get to be in a jury if you absent yourself either from the room or by coloring in maps of Asia or playing on your phone, Um, playing Candy Crush or whatever these assholes are doing. So for Mitch McConnell to use this completely false um, rationale for his vote and then go up there and give a speech saying that the guy he just let off is guilty was a bridge too far. I hope you're right. I hope that that, you know, Democrats just cut ads off of that. I mean... We need a new word, craven 
just isn't going to get get us there anymore. Yeah. You know, he's a soulless hack. He is perfectly comfortable um, putting this country's, you know, not quite yet realized democracy in danger. And um, yeah, it was infuriating. It was absolutely infuriating. I'm not entirely sure why the Democrats weren't throwing shit at him. Yeah, and I, I remember the as he was starting, he was just a couple minutes into his speech, I remember tweeting, is he on the impeachment manager's team now? Because he's making the exact arguments that the impeachment managers made. He He drew conclusions based on the case presented by the amazing impeachment managers, yet voted not guilty on this technicality, which, as you said, at the outset had been decided was a decided question. It would be like if a jury came back and said, you know, no, we find them uh, not guilty because of this particular phrase that the lawyer said. And then the judge goes, yes, but that we had that stricken from the record. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but you, we still used it. Um, you you can't it's but this again is not a, a, court, a criminal court of law it's a political proceeding so they can hang out and tell get you know get together with the vanderveen beforehand and decide what questions they're going to ask it, it was just it was just ridiculous yeah and and what is the point of having a pat Leahy or john roberts there if they're just gonna let it happen like, you know, so th there there is literally no um, similarity between this and a trial. None. There's no judge. Uh, there's no jury. There are no rules, apparently. Yeah. Um, I mean, imagine if you were sitting on a jury and you just left the room, the judge would throw your ass in jail for contempt of court, you know, uh, or you know, if you weren't paying attention, you would be removed and replaced with uh, an alternate. So again, I think the weaknesses of uh, the many, many weaknesses in our system have been been revealed over and over and over again in the last four years, just has been this, this idea that Republicans have decided that um, their best move going forward is to be the party of the ignorant, the immature, and the anti-American, or I should say anti-democratic, because they're 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 teaching their um, followers or voters to believe that being anti-democratic and pro-authoritarian is being pro-American, which is kind of terrifying. But uh, I think uh, Barb Barb McQuaid was talking about this, just how the contempt of saying Democrat instead of Democratic. Right. Mispronouncing our vice president's name over and that over one. and over again, yeah. using predominantly people of color and women and women of color and their stupid fucking, you know, fascist videos. Um, you know, that's that's what that's what they've decided works for them. And unfortunately, um, it seems to. Yeah. And and Dana, I, I want to bring you in on this, too, because I, I personally think all of these re Republican senators should be asked um, ad nauseum. Uh, if Donald were still in office, would you have voted to convict? Absolutely. And and I mean, what good is impeachment at all if it's not? for this what is impeachment even for it, it seems now it's like an ineffective archaic thing that just sort of is there for no reason well the false equivalence too between when trump's lawyers or donald's lawyers were talking about how this is the you know the third impeachment uh, in in our in our lifetime and the first one blah 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 the false equivalence between clinton lying about a blowjob to congress and an insurrection and treason is infuriating. The other thing is, is the lawyer arguing that Leahy should not preside over this case because he actually is not a fan of Donald Trump, arguing that which swayed the jury and those guys and women voted that it was unconstitutional, then use that argument in every single Republican juror that said that he they were going to vote to acquit him before the case started, dismiss him. Use the same argument. You're all dismissed. You're not an impartial juror. You told us this before the case. You're dismissed. And then take the two-thirds vote on the people that are still left in the room. 
it's just it the whole system's so broken and i agree with you it's if it's this is just you know they keep saying this is p- political theater that's them projecting this really is at this point just political theater if this is all this is going to be they cast the people well, they're the then... ones who put spooky music behind their videos oh God, they were the only know. ones that did that <laughs> any judge would have said uh stop this right now yeah this is an evidence absolutely you know this is an mtv music video that's that's designed to create a certain impression ab you know it in addition or um outside of the visual right you know so i think that this is the point where the media have to start doing their fucking job They've been a lot better, you know. They they have have made it clear um, that the big lie is a big lie, that Biden won legitimately, et cetera, et cetera. But you do not have any of these people on your show unless they're willing to answer two questions. The question Dana just asked. You said it's un- unconstitutional to have a trial for somebody who was impeached while in office if he or she is no longer in office. What would you have done if he'd still been in office? And at which point they'd probably say, well, who knows? <laughs> but that's theoretical, right? right. That's, that's a, it's a hypothetical. It's a hypothetical. I'm not going to answer but, hypothetical. But then they can't be on your show. And the second question is, did Donald lose the election? 100%. That's it. Yeah. And when they asked that in during the trial, they didn't. he didn't answer. Oh, so that's... That's not my so judgment to my make. judgment. Ugh, what a... Uh. Oh, there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. You're his lawyer. And honestly, I think the question was poorly phrased. Uh, yeah. You know, it should have been a simple, did Biden win the election? You know, because that's not a question of opinion. You know, a lot of those questions were poorly phrased. And what bothered me is that they even entertained. I loved Raskin when someone asked a question about jurisdiction because he got that listen, Fox tone where he was like, listen, you assholes. I don't want to have to answer this again. This is not about jurisdiction that has been settled and started talking to them like they were children as des- as they deserved. But it was one of those things where there were moments where at his brilliance. I mean, the whole the whole managers, all of the managers, um, and we shouldn't call them democratic because they really do represent the entire Senate. They're supposed to. Yeah. They're supposed to represent the Republicans too because yeah, they're supposed to care about this shit. Yeah. Um, but they were phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I also enjoyed when uh, um, I think it was Vanderveen who was like, this isn't the worst thing. This is my worst trip to Washington ever. Oh, my God. And, um, you know, you could see sort of the look that came over Jamie Raskin's face. And he's like, hey, first, I'm just going to address that real quick. You should have been here yeah. on January 6th. Yeah. And then went on to the next thing. I was like, who, you know, that's what a what a privileged asshole thing to say just what a dumb and he just wasn't good he was just so terrible i loved uh i think it was maddo on friday she talked about uh, uh emily latella from saturday night live confusing violins with violence on television <laughs> and how he he said that trump <laughs> called ben roethlisberger the former quarterback of the fucking pittsburgh steelers <laughs> And uh, how he wants to bring everybody to his office in Philadelphia, you know, (laughs) just absolutely, totally Um. unprepared and ridiculous. And I mean, you know, I know he's a personal injury lawyer, but I mean, he's really I feel bad for other personal injury lawyers this week. Well, (laughs) this is exactly the kind of representation Donald deserves. Of course, the rest of us, on the other hand, it was brutal. It was so brutal having to watch the oh my god um (laughs) they were so outmatched okay it's not vander it's not caster it's not vander whatever it's the third guy what was his name shown shown so shown is beginning his whole thing up there going what about an honor i feel like i could cry (laughs) standing on the senate floor what an honor it is to be here i feel like i'm getting emotional i could cry and then he proceeded to lie to the senate he respected for i don't know three days just over and over lie to them and then bless his heart i don't i don't know what he was reading i don't know what the poem was but when he started crying i text mary i said are you 
you got to be fucking kidding me right now. What is happening? I'm like, is he pretending to cry by, yeah. when he's reading his shanty? Um, like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, it was Longfellow, which is by like one of the worst fucking like. You know what? Why don't you just do Robert Frost's <laughs> Two Roads exactly. Diverged in the Woods, and we could call it a commencement ceremony. Oh my god. And I'm not, I'm not shaming men. I want you to cry more. You'd be having less heart attacks. Trust me. But that, that was absolutely ridiculous. But be sincere, for God's sake. Oh. It was nothing sincere. Well, um, I am now, you know, kind of putting a lid on this, looking to move forward. We need to um, get. Merrick Garland confirmed uh, last week Biden asked all of Trump's U.S. attorneys to resign except for two, the one that's investigating Hunter Biden and Durham, the one who's investigating the investigation of the investigation. Um, But, you know, good move. That's an interesting decision. No, I get it, but it's still interesting. I mean, I get the Hunter Biden one more than I get the uh, Durham one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Durham shouldn't have even been appointed. You can't appoint a special counsel that's uh, anyway um, that already works for the government. But those are the rules of the special counsel that I didn't make up. Neil Katyal wrote them. So, you know, um, damn you, Neil Katyal. He didn't want to uh, he didn't want to overstep any boundaries, but we're going to get new uh, U.S. attorneys. We're going to have a new attorney general. We need to start investigating Um, the insurrection criminally and we need to start investigating it with a 9-11 type commission or a special counsel or congressional investigations or all three however you want to do it Um, but more is going to come out we will have witnesses we will I'm sure hear from Butler Herrera Butler we will subpoena uh, McCarthy and um, you know Mark Short and, and Pence probably if they refuse of course we have to take them to court but you know, and we might not get through that, that they'll be able to run the clock out on that. But, you know, and, and then we got to hold and increase our, our footprint in the Senate and the House in 2022. That's our forward looking stuff that we got to work on. And of course, all the other uh, Biden agenda, by the way, if I hear that one more time, I'm going to exactly. barf. But it's all very important stuff that needs to needs to keep happening. I wish the Senate didn't adjourn this week. I wish they were in D.C. working. But here we are. I, d- I don't get it. I, I you know, they had momentum. Uh, we are in the middle. It's like this even needs to be said anymore, for God's sakes. And I think that's part of why our reaction was so extreme because like how much more can we take? Seriously. Seriously. Um, and, uh, you know, to have our hopes dashed, we're not really understanding what was going on. Um, but it just seemed like, I have a couple of questions. First of all, like how much more evidence do the Democrats need that they gotta, they have to get rid of the filibuster. It's not in the Constitution. It's a, it's historically been a device to keep black people down. Let's, and and you know we, I know that the our rationale is a tyranny of the majority. Well, the fifty senators who are Democratic represent forty three million more people. Than the senators who are Republicans. So let's just get rid of that old trope. That's what we need to do first, because uh, I agree with you. We need to get rid of the filibuster, but I think we should get D.C. statehood. Yep. Puerto Rico should vote on statehood first. We should solve we should solve our uh, voter suppression and voter oppression problem by passing the John Lewis Voter Rights Act. And we can actually do that without eliminating the filibuster. We can actually, and Senator Schumer ta- said that he this is something he can do. He can rewrite the budget reconciliation rules is to allow non-budgetary legislation to be passed with a simple majority. It's a complete end run around the filibuster. Uh, but my my main concern right now is we're 50-50. And if, you know, when Leahy went into the hospital, uh, we're uh, a hair away from losing our majority. And if we end the filibuster before we secure the votes that we need in the Senate, I'm, I'm afraid that the Republicans will just run rough shot over everything uh, without it. They will. Of course they will. And I, you know, and that, I forget because Vermont is Vermont. Like how could Vermont have a Republican senator? But I feel the same way. And, you know, forgive me for saying this, but I am still so angry at Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She had it. I'm sorry. She had an opportunity. We shouldn't be in this position where the majority of the Supreme Court represents the the tiniest percentage of people in this country. And, you know, and and Leahy, I don't know. It's same thing with Feinstein. I mean, for God's sakes, guys, don't you like 
I don't want to work until the day I drop dead. Like I have other stuff I want to do. <laughs> Come on. Seriously. And especially <laughs> knowing that Vermont would of course, elect, or almost certainly elect another democratic Senator. Why risk it? You know, and there is, cause there is so much we could accomplish. We should be doubling the size of the federal judiciary. We should absolutely be adding. I think we should. I think the Supreme Court should have 15 seats. Um, no, I'm not kidding. No, no. What, what's funny is I, I did the math. I did some back of the envelope math. If we if we adjusted the Supreme Court like we did inflation or the cost of living by the number of Supreme Court justices versus the population in 1798, the population of the United States was four million and we had six Supreme Court justices. The equivalent today would be 495 Supreme Court justices. I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> I saw your tweet. It was like, yes, exactly. Exactly. So we could add another six for God's sakes. Um, because just think of what we could do. And and the best way, it's not the only way, and Ed might think it's going to fix all of our problems, but the best way to start healing the divide and changing people's minds about how government works is to make the government work for them and remind them that the government is us. It's not them. It's not some, you know, hostile foreign power out to get us. It's us. And if we have a Senate that acts like it, it is in, you know, is has the majority, which it does. I don't give a shit if it's one vote or 40 votes, then we can get so much done that's going to help the American people. And then that 22 percent that should be ever forever contained can go crawl back under their rocks again. No kidding. Well said. Mm -hmm. And they've been there. Right. We've yeah. just not had the. Internet. Well, no. And, and, you know, the thing is that that people forget for two years, 100 percent of the federal government represented those people. Right. Yeah. And the disease mm -hmm. metastasized. And here we are. Yeah, it was a validating and, and justified for them to to be their disgusting selves. Uh, well, I really appreciate your time today, Mary. We do have to run, but um, I just I wanted to thank you so much. Everybody follow Mary Trump on Twitter. It's one of the best follows. It's one of the best things you'll do today. Um, and I appreciate your time. I really do. I love I love being here. It's good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Uh, everybody stick around. We'll be back with the good news. Hey, everybody, it's AG, and this segment of the Daily Beans podcast is brought to you by Helix Sleep. As longtime listeners know, I've had trouble sleeping the past four years. At first, I thought it was because uh, of the person in the White House. But as it turned out, I also did not have a mattress that was meant for me. It wasn't working, so I had to get rid of it, and Helix has saved me. Let me tell you about Helix Sleep. They have created an online sleep quiz, okay? It takes two minutes to complete, and they use those answers to match your body type and your sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. So you are like, you're matched. It's a perfect Valentine's Day together. So if you sleep really hot, or if you like a soft bed or a firm bed, or you sleep on your side or your back or your belly, there is a specific mattress for each and everyone's unique taste. I personally was matched with the Helix Midnight because I like a medium firm bed and I sleep on my side, so it's perfect for me. But you don't have to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2019 and then again in 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. So just go to helixsleep.com slash dailybeans, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They also have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it for 100 sleeps risk-free. They'll pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you definitely will. And now Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash dailybeans. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash dailybeans for up to $200 off. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news and good news today. So I'm very thankful to all the listeners who have written in with their confessions and corrections and good news and pod pet tax photos and uh, all of that. I'm really excited to get to this, Dana. I need a I need a good news injection. Me too. And I, I did uh, what I don't normally do. I didn't read ahead. So all these pictures will be new to me. But if I flub any of these stories, it's because I have not read them yet. So but I'm looking forward to this. Same. I did the same thing because, you know, we talked about that. We're like, we should just not read it at all. So we're totally genuinely surprised when we get these. So. Uh, first up from Sarah, pronoun she and her. Hello, politics goddesses. This year, we thought Girl Scout cookie sales were going to be low due to COVID. Oh, oh Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> And as such, uh, such so we kept our initial inventory low. Well, 
Apparently, we were wrong. Sales have been through the roof. This year, our state opened up uh, an option for contactless drop-off and ordering through a Girl Scout, a Girl Setup cookie site. That's so cool. Uh, I believe that it helped because people need sugar this year and Girl Scouts can provide. My daughter surpassed her goal in the first week. We still have 23 days left to sell, and I'm excited to see how well she can do. As tax, I'm including a picture of my junior scout and my dogs, Jackson and Tucker. Jax is black. Tucker is brown. Thanks for all you ladies provide. Oh, oh, there she is. Oh, my goodness. I remember being a junior scout. Do they still have to cross the the rainbow? I know, and this is going to sound weird, but they, you do you get your rainbow bridge patch for a crossing over into uh, senior Girl Scouts. Right. Isn't that what they say when animals pass away? Yes. And I just it just dawned on me. So I wonder if they've changed that. <laughs> I would hope so. And also, I'm going to spread a good rumor. It's a rumor, but I feel like it's valid. One of the reasons that I love the Girl Scouts uh, cookies so much and will continue to support them is they support trans girls and they will not take money from anti-trans organizations. Yeah. So tell me if I'm wrong with that, but I've read it in two different places. And so I'm just going to choose to believe it's true. <laughs> yeah. And there is a troop, Troop 6000, which is a troop um, comprised of homeless Girl Scouts. I and love so this. You, you can buy cookies through them to support them as well. Oh my goodness, they're such good things. Okay, that's a, that was a, like a triple good news story. Thank you for that. This next one's from Anonymous, pronouns she and they. Hey, AG, DG, Amy, and all. I finally have some good news. I paid off my credit card debt. I ended up in a financial abusive situation that my partner ran up tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt all in my name, and I was stuck with it. It's taken me many years, but I finally paid them off the other day. It's such a relief to be out from under that burden. And as soon as things are safe again from this awful pandemic, I'm going to go out and living my life to the fullest. Big smiley face. It's been a struggle to find good things throughout the past few years. But with the Trump presidency and the rise of fascism here, the pandemic, all horrible things, the situation I was in and finding out I have been struggling with several disabilities that I wasn't even aware of. But things are starting to look a lot brighter these days. Thanks for the pod. The insights you all give to the constant shit show are so good. And I hate the wait. I hate the wait seeing what happens during the day and hearing what you all have to say about it. And thank you so much for being such a welcoming place for queer folks. I'm trans myself, and it's such a relief to see that you all are accepting. Not only accepting, celebrating anonymous. I celebrate you. I don't just accept you. I celebrate you. I love that you're here. Thank you. Yeah, well beyond acceptance. Love you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that submission. Next up, we have Adam, pronouns he and him. Hi, AG and Dana. Good news and a suggestion. I love your shows and feel that your intelligent and persistent unraveling of the Trump lies made the various Russia scandals understandable and helped those of us who are reading the actual news feel like we had a community. Good news. On a car trip, my teen daughter asked me to tell her a story of the Mueller report. My kids do this every now and then when they want a full history download on something. That's so cute. Mommy, tell us that story about the Mueller report. She listened riveted as I took her through a 90 minute explanation of Trump's illegal and shady involvement with Russia dating back to the <laughs> 80s and through the Mueller investigation. I was able to do this because of your shows. Suggestion. I hope that you all, uh, you and all news reporters can stop <gasps> referring to the House impeachment managers as the Democrats. AG. I, what? I just talked about this in the interview. You did. Adam and Adam and I believe. Uh, okay, keep going. Sorry. I know I'm not supposed to interrupt these stories. <laughs> no, this is. <laughs> This is so good um, because this is so prescient, Adam, because I we recorded the, the Mary Trump interview before we read this. I just want to put that out there. I hope you and all news reporters stop referring to the House impeachment managers as the Democrats. I know everyone on the team is a Democrat, but they represent the majority of the House. They represent a bipartisan vote to impeach, and they are essentially representing the United States, the people's house. In my estimation, when we refer to them as the Democrats, we're playing to the Trump Republicans' hand by making this seem partisan. Well said. Yep, very well said. Keep on keeping on. The show is wonderful. My family has started listening, and we've we sing the transition songs to each other, including AG's deadpan hot notes. And after these messages, we'll be right back. I include as pet tax a picture of me napping with our two-year-old lab pit mix named Moose. That's such a good name, and he's such a cuddler. Oh <gasps> my God, Moose! You and Adam are adorable. Aww. Notice how I was talking to Moose instead of saying Adam. You and Moose are adorable. <laughs> Moose, if you're hearing this, you and your owner, you and your person are cute. Love it. I love guys with good facial hair. It makes me super happy. I don't know what it is. I feel like if I, for some reason, presented as a man, I, I would I would try and have a nice facial hair if, if it ran in my family, if the genes were there. 
All right, anonymous pronoun she and her. I guess this is a confession, a grammar confession. After hearing the recent discussion on the me versus I debate, I utterly and completely understand AG's position. I was raised by a mother who instilled in me, it's always, always, always AG and I. If we said me, we would get in trouble. I don't recall if my public school held the same grammatical beliefs as my mother, but I developed an almost visceral reaction to hearing someone say AG and me. Fast forward to today, where I'm an educated, accomplished adult who will do mental gymnastics, <laughs> mental grammatical gymnastics to avoid using the and me because I cringe every time I hear it, even when I know it's grammatically correct. I agree there are times when it sounds very wrong. Uh, as long as we are on the subject of grammar, I'm still a person who, based on my degree in psychology, I have been trained to write in APA, which dictates two spaces after a period. Apparently, yes. that is the latest taboo. Add to my list of faux pas. So rest strengths, your yeah. list of strengths. <laughs> so rest assured, you were not the only one who has been traumatized by the me versus I debate. Can I also add that I love the show and have been around since the kitchen table days. And as a nurse, not many things get done on a quote normal schedule. Sometimes I have two to three episodes of the beans to listen to in one day, and it gets confusing at times. When someone says tomorrow or on Thursday. It can be confusing when listening to episodes days late. It's possible. Um, is it possible to say things like Monday the 15th? Ah, thank you for all you do. Yeah, I can work on that. Yeah, I can too. Happy to. Thank you very much for that. Anonymous. Uh, up from Irish Granny, submitted with great affection. Hi, friends. I had a good laugh at the listener who wrote in to correct your misuse of pronouns. I don't know what brand of nun taught AG, but I served 17 years hard time in Catholic schools. <laughs> I promise you, had you been subjected to Sister Ignatius Anne, you'd never make another grammar error in your life. I toiled for hours throughout fifth and sixth grades. Yes, I had her both years. I was in purgatory, diagramming sentences and doing fill-in-the-blank grammar exercises. Sister Ignatius Anne drummed it into us, quite literally, for many of the boys. The girls she merely verbally humiliated. Every time I hear, between she and I, I die a little inside. A.G., you're in stellar company. There is not a, a news anchor, journalist, blogger, or podcaster who doesn't often and get it wrong. Oh, phew. I have trained myself to take deep breaths and say nothing because I don't want to be, quote, that bitch. My fear is that the Catholic Church was right, and when I die, I'll be serving a good long time in limbo, unbaptized babies with unbaptized babies. <laughs> in the meantime, keep up the fabulous work and rack up those venial sins with swearing and all. Yes, Irish Granny, you are going to be stuck in purgatory having to listen to Roger Stone say, between she and I, over and over again. Uh, God. <laughs> no, you're going, you're going up. You're going up, Irish granny. That's hysterical. Thank you so much for that submission. I love, I, I struggle with it too. There are times where I literally stop in the middle of a sentence and like say it in my head and sometimes out loud to make sure I have it right. And I'll correct myself. Uh, this next one's from Denise, pronouns she and her. I'm a day behind, so I'm sure someone has to let you, has already let you know. <gasps> yes, cows can have horns. Best cat toy best cat toys pecans still in their shells oh that's the best cat toy are pecans that are still in their shells we leave on a we live on a pecan farm oh and wine corks are also good cat toys well that can be that can happen um my my pet tax yeah. <laughs> i just need it now i need a cat i have plenty i have plenty of wine corks i have no I shortage of cats. of what wine corks and cats no shortage of that in fact there was a like an old song I think sometime that came out around 2014 or something called Slapbacks and Tattoos and I had sort of a little song that I would sing when every time I took the trash out it was wine bottles and cat poo oh my god cuz that was the bulk of what was going out to the trash hilarious so someone dropped them off in the barn incredibly young and sick. Oh, this is the pet tax. My pet tax is my two kittens, even though they're two years old. Someone dropped them off in the barn incredibly young and sick. The good news, they're healthy now. They've had too many names to list. <laughs> Parentheses, but, B-U-T-T, -T, and boo seem to be the latest. Also, here is my happy place in spring, summer and fall, where I wait all winter for flowers. I look forward to the daily beans every day, and I'm sorely missing you on the weekends. Cats are beautiful oh and the flowers are so pretty oh that's beautiful those cosmos they look like cosmos and petunias i could be totally wrong let me know correct me if i'm wrong next up from heather pronoun she and her hiya friends 
Count me in as one of the crew who found you at the beginning of the pandemic and fast became a daily listener. Thanks so much providing for providing on a regular basis that there's still good and sane humans out there. This one is for the ongoing saga on hot dog condiments. I used to be a mayo on hot dog sort, Ew. being mostly I'm from sorry. Florida. I didn't, to, I didn't mean to yuck your gum, Heather. I'm so <laughs> sorry that just came out. This is a uh, this is an old Amy's court case. Oh, okay. They wanted to know if mayonnaise on hot dogs was okay. I said no. Amy said yes. Okay. Um, being mostly from Florida, cue vague shame feels, until I moved to the Seattle area to begin what I consider my real life, capital R, capital L. I'm told it's Seattle style, but I can't cite my sources, so take it with a grain of mayo to put cream cheese on your dog. Yes, and it is the best thing ever. It is really good. That one doesn't upset me. That one doesn't upset me. It's really good. My preference is to add sriracha, too, but you can add any other condiment you like for true culinary delight. Pod Pet Tax included, the many moods of Ernie the Cat, a.k.a. that fucking cat, and Zero the Iggy Russell, Italian Greyhound and Jack Russell Terrier. All Zero loves to climb trees, uh, so she's also known as the Pacific Northwest Forest Terrier. <laughs> but bonus pet is my step dog. That's my partner's dog, Eris. Wondering why the hell Zero was up in a tree, and do I want to try that too? <laughs> Parentheses. She did. <laughs> Dogs that climb trees are the best. Oh goodness! Yeah, look at the dog in the tree. All of these pictures are fantastic. Oh. I love the cat just drawing a little yoga stretch. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sitting like a person yep. oh, so cute so, look at the so dog cute. with the scarf at the end oh, oh my, my gosh goodness. thank you for these thank you what a wonderful ending to a fantastic good news segment oh yes and if you have any please send them to us we will need them we will continue to need them uh this community is so amazing and so supportive and so wonderful and you can send in your confessions and corrections and photos of your happy places and your pod pets and your kids and your grandkids all to us at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. That's how you get a hold of us. Again, don't forget to join uh, Dana Dana and me me (laughs) on Thursday at 5 Pacific. Just download the Stereo app. Um, It's free and you can set up an account by going to stereo.com slash Allison Gill and search for myself myself and for DG Comedy and just follow us and and we'll see you Thursday at 5 Pacific. It's so much fun. I love those. Please do. Yes, please do. I'm really starting to love those. And, And, you know, if you have an idea, by the way, for a theme or something we should do, like... The last time, uh, a couple times ago, we had people sing the questions to us in the in the to the tune of "Girl from Ipanema," and then what did we do last week, Dana? Oh, we asked him what was your favorite adult be- no adult beverages, but also like crazy stories when we were a kid because you talked about like dangerous stuff your parents used to do, and I was like, we drank out of a hose for the first ten years of our lives, like everything was fine. And we're all alive yeah. still to tell the story. So, so if you can think of something fun for everybody to stick at the end of their question. Um, just send it into us the, again dailybeanspod.com and go to contact and let us know thanks yeah any last words any final last words any last words <laughs> nope, Dana? that's it it's been real y'all take care i love working with you ag and uh <laughs> if, you, if you want to follow me so you know what i'm doing next i would love that it's dg comedy on all the social medias including instagram <laughs> why should i say last words <laughs> oh my god do any last words uh no <laughs> You've been with a blindfold on and a cigarette in your mouth. Okay. What's your final meal? Anyway, everyone, until tomorrow, uh, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, take care of your mental health, and take care of the planet. I've been AG. And I was DG. (laughs) (laughs) Them's the beans. Any last words, Dana Gold? The Daily Beans is directed, written, and hosted by executive producer Allison Gill and engineered and edited by Mackenzie Mazell and Starburns Audio. Staff writers include Dana Goldberg, Amy Carrero, and Allison Gill. Our copy is written by Jesse Egan, and our marketing manager, executive assistant, and social media director is Kanai. Fact checking and research by Allison Gill, Dana Goldberg, and Amy Carrero. Our music is written and performed by They Might Be Giants. Our web design and branding are by Joel Reeder of Moxie Design Studios. And our website is dailybeanspod.com. Hey, everybody, do not miss our Daily Beans after party on the Stereo app. We'll be going live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Dana and I want to hear from you. Our last Stereo show went a little bit like this. And uh, we're here doing our live after party. Daily Beans after party is what they're they're calling it, what the kids are calling it these days. It reminds me of I just watched (laughs) the 30 Rock episode where Liz Lemon was like, 
uh, out with Tracy Jordan. And he's like, are you going to the after, 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 after party? And they end up like on somebody's roof. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, just finished watching that vote, the vote to oust Marjorie Taylor Greene from her two committees. Uh, I, I think I was incorrect. I think the last time we were here live, I said that she was only, I thought she was only on one committee. She was on two committees. She yeah. was on education and labor and also on the budget committee. Like Education, what? education. She's on the committee of edu. She was, was, because she got voted off of education. Yeah. And 11 Republicans voted alongside Democrats to oust her from these seats. Uh, so we're going to see how the backlash of that plays out. Cause as you know, McCarthy was like, well, what about Maxine Waters? And what about so-and-so? And they get to keep their committee seats. Like they committed, like they wanted other people to be executed or believed that nine 11 was not real or what, like, come exactly. on, like, stop. Stereo is the app for live social conversations. We want to talk directly with you, the listeners. You can join our show. Dana and I ask us questions about news, politics, anything. And you can share your experiences and opinions. And we want to hear it all. So download the new app called Stereo and join us live this week, Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific. Link to our show in the description and join us over on the Stereo app.